We start here in Nigeria, of course, as President Bola Tinubu has announced plans for a dignified burial and national honors for fallen soldiers in the Okwama community. During the breaking of fast event with the leadership of the House of Representatives, Tinubu underscored the nation's commitment to honoring its fallen heroes. The president also urged federal lawmakers to let ministries, heads of departments and agencies fulfill their duties. He emphasized the importance of lawmakers allowing MDAs to carry out their responsibilities while acknowledging their influential role in oversight functions. On his part, the Speaker of the House of Representatives assured the president of the full support of the legislature. Meanwhile, President Tinubu has placed a temporary ban on foreign travels by public officials under the employment of the federal government starting from April 1st this year. I accept the sympathy and on behalf of the country, I saw your messages from, for the loss of the life of our military men. We have to salute them as our heroes, responding to distress call. They met the end of their life in a savagery manner. Let us work to sympathize and symbolize the fact their life worth the sacrifice they are making for Nigeria. We salute all our men and women in uniform and we sympathize with them. I also make further pronouncement. They must have a befitting barrier and they will have national honor. Right, so those are the latest developments. And uh, let's bring the conversation back into the studio. Rufai, uh, what stands out for you from this, uh, f from this story? I mean, so what stands out for me is, number one, you know, the essence of the holy month of Ramadan itself, you know, that talks about sacrifice and... Um, you know, and I'll segue that into the conversation with the soldiers, you know, sacrificing their life for the country, getting killed in that manner, which is totally abhorrent. And uh, the fact that the president said they'll get a very befitting barrel, which is needed at a point like this, so that it will also show all the people intending to get to the military in the future that uh, their sacrifices will never be in vain. Uh, that's one that stands out for me as regards that story. And, and this community, you know, of constantly reaching out to people during breaking of fasts, having conversations, you know, welcoming people into your home, the togetherness, the unity that the Ramadan, you know, season brings, and that's very outstanding. He said that at least uh, other things, talked about the befitting bearer for the troops, which we commiserate largely with the military, and the three-day mourning period is on, where flags are, at military installations are flown at half-mast. He also went further to talk about the fact that he's going to be you know, putting a suspension, a three-month suspension on foreign travels, you know, by government exec. That I find a little wonky. And, you know, because the truth has to be said, if you deceive me once, there's a higher possibility I might not believe you the second time. As regards things like this, President Tinubu has not been forthright. Would you respect? This was the same President Tinubu that said, we're going to limit the number of people in our entourage. The last visit to Qatar, we remember the Bruhaha, it visited 36 people after we said that we we're just going to limit the number. And even the fact that his sons went there, until date, we cannot understand why on the protocol chain, his sons had to come before seven ministers. So there are a lot of things that have gone on in this administration that you wonder what is really going on. So when he says this again, that they're going to cut or have a suspension and all of this, it remains to be seen. I'd like to believe this government, but to a large extent, this government, you know, constantly give you reason to doubt them with all of these controversies that emerge. So in the light of the economic situation, it's supposed to be the right thing to do. But will this same government be able to carry it out? I mean, we've seen how ministers and those that hold government portfolio frolic around abroad. 
you know, for, for no just cause, for no just reason. So if this ban is affected, it will be a good one. I want President Tinubu and his government to surprise me. But based on the antecedents, I have not been too impressed. And because we don't, and because when you look at the antecedents of announcing the last time, you know, sort of like a reduction in the numbers of those that will travel publicly with his entourage, was because of what happened as regards the jamboree we went to do in Dubai. Now, after that jamboree, we have not learned. Then Qatar happened. Then now we are making another announcement. So please, I will want him to carry out what he has said. But every other thing he said, you know, is in line. And uh, we just hope. And I also want to sneak in this story because it was another prominent story. We've been calling for the clearing of the backlog of all the CBN in a while. And the CBN have certainly said they have come out to clear the verified backlog, which, you know, they put out a figure of about seven billion as a point, but they said they had worked with Deloitte on this, and they were able to clear the very verified backlog, and and that has also made a very good dent as regards our currency, and we have seen that. But for me, the highest spots in the daily trade for the currency went up to one thousand six hundred, even if the number had, you know, stabilized at about four four thousand, uh, you know, nine hundred or something. But the highest spot of the trade was about one thousand six hundred, while the lowest was about one thousand three hundred. So if we can read all of this down. And we also start to look at inflation numbers. They start to fight inflation over a couple of months down. Then at least we can get some level of price stability because price has gone haywire in the system. I just felt I should sneak that because that's another very important story making our national lives this morning. Well, I, I think that that story that you referred to is probably the most important story of the day. We criticize the Central Bank of Nigeria here, uh, but uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria making strides should be something we should be more interested in. Uh, it should be a more important story for our consideration. But I imagine that maybe when Rutu Sudiri comes on the show, uh, he will focus on the more important story of the day, which is the main story in this day uh, newspaper today, how the Central Bank of Nigeria has been able to manage the situation, achieving the objectives of financial stability, paying a backlog of uh, you know, uh, Forex and trying to inspire investor confidence and all that. Well, but that's a digression. That's not a story that the producers and the editors have put on the table. Now, what are they put on the table? It is about the uh, issue, President Chinubu saying that the slain army officers will be given a befitting barrier, they will be given national honors. And I think that that's a very good story. President Chinubu is acting effectively, importantly, as commander-in-chief of the armed forces. He is the commander of the troops. And when he's faced with a situation like this, he has acted properly by saying that these men who fell in the course of active duty should be honored. And in that regard, I think that uh, we should all support President Bola Ahmed Chinubu in ensuring that the families of the slain soldiers in Okwama are given, you know, the necessary support that they need, including counseling, and that these soldiers are remembered uh, and honored for this ultimate sacrifice that they made. I have said again and again that morale is very low among the troops. If you are in a particular profession and you are treated shabbily, your morale will go down. And that has been the case with soldiers. And even in spite of that, military rules state that even when your colleague falls, you remain there at the post because that's your duty. But even then, despite the fact that we have had reports of uh, soldiers helping to rescue people in Katsina and other places, yeah, it doesn't mean that their morale is not low. But they know that they've, they, they, they've taken the oath to defend this territory called Nigeria, and they will continue to do it. And so the president identifying with them in a moment of tragedy and sorrow is something that is uh, very important. And I hope that nobody will be so forgetful that they will not ask the ones that are married among these fallen heroes, you know, that their wives should vacate the barracks without making necessary arrangements to make sure that they are well taken care of. The president has said he will give them national honors, where that's the tradition, you know, elsewhere in the world. But the whole idea is that the commander-in-chief must be seen 
to be building confidence, to be supporting the people who defend the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Nigeria. So those killers of the criminals must not be allowed to go unpunished. They must be fished out. And we hope that the leaders of the affected communities will cooperate with the uh, Nigerian authorities to fish them out. And then uh, there are Nigerian assets that have been lost in the process. The weapons with which those soldiers, you know, armed themselves as they went into the place. Nobody has talked about those assets. Those are federal assets. These are very expensive objects of the Nigerian state. They must go after the people who have stolen those assets and bring them out. No group in Nigeria should be allowed to sabotage, violate the integrity of the Nigerian state. That is the point there. However, the president also made another point. He was telling uh, the National Assembly uh, to be cautious about summoning heads of uh, military, uh, of uh, ministries, departments, and agencies. No, the president is not in a position to say that. With due respect, President Tinubu should be referred to the Constitution. And the Constitution makes it very clear that the National Assembly has its own roles under the Constitution. The, the National Assembly has the responsibility to summon anybody, sometimes even including civilians. Although in one case, we had the famous case of uh, Momo versus Senate of the Federal Republic, where you know, uh, uh, Mr. Tony Momo you know, said, you cannot summon journalists and to ask a journalist to come and disclose his uh, source. So the president of Nigeria cannot say, uh, be careful how you summon people because they are busy. No, the National Assembly of Nigeria has an oversight function and can summon anybody to ask questions. And it is important that the executive arm of government cooperates with the legislative arm to ensure that whether the issue is the killing of uh, soldiers in uh, uh, Okwama or you know, uh, the killing of farmers in Benue and on the plateau, that the National Assembly is allowed to exercise you know, its functions. And the president of Nigeria has no powers to abbreviate either the powers of the National Assembly or of the judiciary. However, we also expect that the lawmakers will conduct themselves in such a responsible manner that they will attract the respect of everybody. If you turn your National Assembly into a rubber stamp assembly, of course, familiarity will, will breed contempt. That's the only part of uh, uh, that statement that I find uh, you know, a bit uh, odd. Otherwise, the president scored all the right points by saying the Nigerian government regrets the death of the 17 slain officers and will honor them and will ensure that they get benefits. No country kills its soldiers. If they die on the battlefield, we can understand that. But to die inside their own country, killed by citizens that they are protecting, no, that's, uh, that's despicable. Right. Now, it's still on the honors being granted to those soldiers, very befitting. Uh, and, uh, you know, I continue to reiterate the importance of telling their stories and sharing a little bit more about some of the work that our soldiers are doing. And I revert back to Lieutenant Colonel Abdullahi Hassan Ali, who actually led uh, a, a battalion into what was called the Timbuktu Triangle that was under the auspices of Operation Tura Takai Bango. So what they did is they destroyed uh, enclaves belonging to Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists. That included Gorgi, Kafa, Abagajiri, Dusula, Book, several of them, uh, killing scores of terrorists. Um, so as much as the end of their lives has unfortunately become the definitive part of their stories because of the tragic way in which they have gone, uh, these are people who have sacrificed their lives immensely to contribute to our safety and security and the fight uh, against uh, terrorism in Nigeria and in the region. So I just wanted to highlight that. Now on to the issue of our culture of governance. Uh, in this disclosure, President Tinubu, of course, uh, shared that 
that the ban, there will be a ban on you know, travel for government officials for three months. And uh, this is in response to the story that emerged that 36 commissioners of finance and uh, along with other government officials had scheduled a workshop in London. These are commissioners of finance of states in Nigeria and their workshop was supposed to take place in London. Of course, that was a big story which caused a lot of outrage, but it, it begs the question, what is the culture around governance? Are we really trying to make an effort and why is it always reactionary? Why does something always need to happen and our response is a reaction? And as Rafai said, even that response sometimes is not followed through. So the question around that, and that's why it's, re it, it's very much related to CBN clearing the backlog on foreign currency because, again, there's $2.4 billion that's still unaccounted for that this government, uh, this CBN uh, 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 governor did an audit on in which he discovered that this 2.4 billion, we still don't know who the beneficiaries are, where did it go? So as much as we celebrate the clearing of the backlog, as much as we celebrate the banning of travel for government officials, because it's all foreign currency related, we still need accountability. Where is the 2.4 billion and when can we hear more about it? Now, on to the next story. The rising tension between the Labour Party and the Nigeria Labour Congress has taken a new turn. Today, the NLC grounded activities, excuse me, yesterday, the NLC grounded activities at the party's national secretariat in Abuja after demanding the immediate removal of the Labour Party national chairman, Julius Abure, over what it describes as contempt for the leadership of the Labour Union, which remains a major founding block within the party. Arise correspondent Chinaza Samuel reports. It was a tense atmosphere at the headquarters of the Labour Party. Within the Utaku district of Abuja, business activities inside the party were completely halted as the police and officials of the Department of State Services camped at the entrance of the LP headquarters. <laughs> The motive is to prevent loss of lives and properties as workers of the Nigeria Labour Congress stage a protest demanding the removal of Julius Aburi as Labour Party National Chairman, citing allegations of corruption and misconduct. <laughs> Protesters initially faced resistance from the police, who prevented entrance into the building, but eventually gave way. Bearing placards and chanting slogans, the NLC protesters accused Aburi of plotting to hold a national convention in contravention to the party's constitution. The national chairman of the party has decided to go and hold a convention without consulting, without discussions with the stakeholders of the party. He did not discuss with NLC, he didn't discuss with Labour, he didn't discuss with members of the House of Representatives, and who are Labour as uh, Labour members, he didn't discuss with anybody. According to them, the Labour Party belongs to the Nigeria Labour Congress claiming they are on a mission to take it back. The owners of the party, the people who founded this party, registered this party, have come here today to say we are taking back our, our party. Okay? The person who parades himself as the chairman of the party, Julius Abure, has since to be chair person of this party. There is nothing. In fact, let me tell you, he has been an imposter. His time has been up. He's broken every rule, moral code, legal code, political code, no, whatever it is, he has, his time is up. The Labour Party belongs to National Labour Congress. Now, we are saying that this is the due time. Abure has been rubbing salt into the injury. So what we are doing today is what the owner of the party is doing. We are saying, leave our party for us, by fire, by force. What a party where the common man can contest. Yes. What a party where the common man has a voice. 
We want a party where the workers have voice, where the workers will be part of the policy making, where the workers will determine how the wealth they create should be appropriated. We have come to take over our party. The cause for Abure's resignation has no doubt reached a fever pitch following recent developments within. For the Nigeria Labour Congress, the picketing of the party's headquarters is a step in the right direction towards taking over the leadership of the party. The analysis says it will soon unveil other plans towards reclaiming the party in the coming days. Chinaza Samwa, Arise News. What a sorry sight to see. Rufai. I'm not surprised that this is happening in our democracy. It will always happen. Why do I say it will always happen? Once you see success, you will see adversaries. Little wonder they say, new level, new devil. All of a sudden, the Labour, Nigeria Labour Congress wants the Labour Party so much, they created it. All of this as a result of the offshoot of the success in the last elections. Prior to this time, the Labour Party had never gotten this level of success in the presidential election. Also, there are some discordant tunes, even internally in the party. At first, it was from the Arab B faction that talked about Abure being corrupt. They've been able to fight all that in the court out. That also segues into the fights leading up to the Edo primaries. But now, it's another fight by the Nigerian Labour Congress. I would have wanted the Nigerian Labour Congress to be able to face the challenges of Nigerian workers and not the squabble over labor because it's so easy now for people to pigeonhole Nigerian Labor Congress as partisan and being political. And once you see that, then there's a big problem. I'm not saying all over the world labor parties do not have alliances with labor union. I mean, you remember the great alliance between the likes of Len McCloskey, of Unite then, and Jeremy Corbyn, even in South Africa, Kosatu, all right, and some faction of the ANC. But the truth has to be said in this regard, once you get pigeonholed, then it makes mockery of your quest for the betterment of workers. I would have rather they should settle this internally and not go into the Labour Party headquarters and cause all of this skirmish. The Labour Party has said, okay, they're going to have a counter-legal action. But this is as a result of the success of the Labour Party. But also, those fighting now for the soul of the Labour Party, you remember the success itself can be transient sometimes. I really don't consider this an important story. There are more important things happening in the country that my time could have been used to comment upon. I don't consider this important. However, since the story is before me, I might as well comment upon it. Now, the thing is that the Labour Party is in distress. And this should be a call to action for the Labour Party to reorganize itself. In fighting between the Labour Party and uh, the National Executive, it's very unfortunate. And I think that you know, partisan issues are not so important. You know, we should focus more on governance issues. But just to make a point, the Labour Party is a creation of the NLC. They created it in uh, 2002, I think. Uh, it was called then the Party for Social Democracy. Now, the Labour Party needs to study the example of Tulu in the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, you have, you know, uh, uh, labor unions that created, that support the Labour Party. And these uh, labor unions, under the umbrella of Tulu, they have a say in the running of the uh, Labour Party of the United Kingdom, to the extent that the funds of the unions are used to support the party to the extent that the union has a say in how the party is run. So is that the model we have in Nigeria? If the, lab if the NLC is the founding organization of the Labour Party, what is the extent of the say that it has? I recommend to uh, members of the Labour Party and the NLC to go and study the model in the United Kingdom. If you, are, if you put money into it, then you will have a say in it. And I think all of this is very unfortunate. I keep saying that a political party that governizes young people of Nigeria, that uh, you know, uh, threw up uh, Mr. Peter Obi as a symbol and an icon for progress and nationalism and achievement in Nigeria, now finds itself at the level of partisan squabbles and, and all of that. Really, I, I, I really don't think this is an important story. 
they should go and look inwards and then try to reorganize their political party. Can we focus on governance? That's more important to me. Absolutely. You know, they often say trade unions are powerless yet feared. So it almost feels like uh, it's uh, one of those uh, power plays playing out where they're, of course, trying to piggyback off of a little bit of uh, political mileage to try and get themselves ahead. But we're currently trying to negotiate a new minimum wage. Why are we not exerting our energy on that? What about the wage awards that were the reprieve that were offered up to workers that are reported to have said not to have been paid in full? Why are we not exerting our energy on that? So it's unfortunate to see that uh, the trade unions, it's a reflection of the, uh, of the times, of the economic hardships, because these uh, ladies and gentlemen should have been at work or should have been somewhere doing something productive. But because obviously minimum wage is where it is, most people are earning less than a dollar a day, there's enough energy to go around to go and pick it and break into uh, party headquarters, which is unfortunate and illegal. So I do hope that this is handled uh, with all of the attention that it requires. Now to other news that's making the rounds this morning. The Central Bank of Nigeria yesterday announced that all valid foreign exchange backlogs owed various sectors of the economy had been settled. The group chief executive officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Melek Yari, yesterday said that the anticipated public listing of the company's shares at the stock market as provided for in the Petroleum Industry Act will start soon. And now to the foreign scene, Ireland's Prime Minister Leo Varadkar has revealed his intention to resign, citing personal and political but mainly political reasons in a surprise move. And to New Zealand, where the nation has slipped into its second recession in less than 18 months, according to government figures.